All right, good afternoon and welcome to Center Care Health Facebook Live Chat. Today we'll be answering your questions about heart health as February is Heart Month. Joining us is cardiologist Dr. Benjamin Johnson. Dr. Johnson earned his medical degree from the University of Minnesota and completed his cardiovascular disease fellowship at Hennepin County Medical Center and the Minneapolis Heart Institute at Abbott Northwestern Hospital. Dr. Johnson will also be hosting conversations with a cardiologist on Wednesday, February 21st at the Center Care Health Plaza, and tickets are available now, and we'll be posting a link to purchase tickets following our live chat. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Johnson. We'll just get right into asking some of those important heart health questions. Um, what are some of the warning signs or symptoms of heart disease? Well, yeah, thank you for that uh, introduction there, Karna. <clears throat> um, heart disease is, is tricky. I mean, they're, they're, you can have the symptoms uh, like you see on the movies or the TV shows where there's the quote unquote elephant sitting on my chest and I need to go and get this checked out right now. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. This is my heart until proven otherwise. There's also other symptoms that are more nonspecific that can happen. So you can have breathing difficulties when you're exerting yourself. Uh, sometimes you know people are just more fatigued. They don't have the energy to get through the day anymore and that's an abrupt change for them. Sometimes that can indicate heart disease. Um, so it's really important to be in tune to your body and know when you're experiencing something different um, and potentially get evaluated for that. Is heart disease um, tends to be genetic? Uh, it certainly can be, yes. Yep. So um, there are people that do everything completely right, but it just so happens that the genetics that they have, the genes they inherited from their family members, put, that, put them at an increased risk for heart disease and they end up having a heart attack. So what are the tests that someone should have done and how often should they do it to monitor their risk factors for developing heart disease or even stroke? Yeah, so I, I'm a really strong advocate for the, our primary care providers. Um, we have excellent primary care providers here in central Minnesota, especially in the central care system. And I always tell my patients that you need to establish with a, a primary care provider, someone who's going to be your quarterback, so to speak. Um, and the tests that really need to be checked on a, at least annual basis uh, for people that are considered completely healthy would be screening for uh, diseases like diabetes, high cholesterol, um, high blood pressure, uh, and also just asking questions on a regular basis about are you having any of these symptoms that could be correlated to the heart. Those are all risk factors that could potentially increase someone's risk for developing heart disease and they're important to be screened for. You talked about those risk factors. So what are some things that a person can do to lower their risk of heart disease? So we always tell our patients to uh, make sure you get some exercise. So we recommend four to up to even seven days a week getting out and getting some exercise. Be active. And when you exercise, don't just go for a, a walk. Go for a brisk walk. Try to do something where you get your heart rate up and sustain a, an elevated heart rate for 15, 20, 30 minutes if you can. Um, we always uh, also recommend dietary modifications, so eating a well-balanced diet uh, that's low in um, trans fats and saturated fats, also low in sugars and carbohydrates. Um, so these are some of the things you can do to help prevent some of those things. Don't take up smoking. Uh, don't get obese. So. Okay. Um, so uh, we, uh, it's not just men. It's also women that can definitely have um, it can definitely have heart disease. So how um, how are warning signs of heart disease different from men and women? Yeah, that's a really good question, Karna. So uh, men and women can experience different symptoms in the setting of a, a cardiac event. Um, so oftentimes men will experience the symptoms that you typically um, associate with heart disease or heart attacks, such as that elephant on my chest that we talked about earlier. Um, women, on the other hand, oftentimes experience different symptoms. Um, symptoms like nausea or um, arm pain, back pain, jaw pain, something that you wouldn't necessarily associate with your heart and something that you wouldn't necessarily be immediately concerned about. And this is the reason why women often present later with their cardiac events uh, than men do. So we do have a question. Simon is asking, and if you're able to talk to this, great. If this is maybe out of your expertise, that's also fine. But he does ask, what are the risks of mitral clip, transcatheter, mitral valve repair? 
Yeah, that's a really good question. And um, I will speak a little bit to this um, at, at the event on February 21st. Um, next, the day after that event is actually um, National Heart Valve Day. Um, and our group here um, has an outstanding valve team uh, led by Dr. Dolly. Um, and we do mitra clips here. Um, we typically reserve that procedure for patients who are at a higher risk uh, for undergoing open heart surgery to repair their mitral valve. Um, but yeah, there, there are risks involved with any procedure we do. Um, it is a very involved procedure. Um, there's a cardiac surgeon available in case something were to go wrong and you'd have to emergently um, open the chest and, and do an open heart surgery. Um, there's also a non-invasive cardiologist there doing imaging during the procedure. Um, so it's a very involved process. At any step of the way, you could have a, a complication, like with the blood vessel where they go in, um, a perforation to the heart, actually, where you get fluid collection around the heart that can be imminently dangerous and life-threatening. Um, but for the most part, if you're at a center that does high volume of these procedures, um, chances are you won't have an adverse complication. Okay. We have another question from Sheena, and we, we covered this a little bit, but um, she goes a little bit more specific. If, if your family does have a history of heart disease, <clears throat> when should you get yourself, when should you get your heart checked? That's an outstanding question. Um, so oftentimes we'll ask you at what age did your family member have their event, and sometimes help gauge uh, when we start screening you uh, for whether or not you have coronary disease. Um, one of the really important screening tools that I use is a, an actually a low-dose um, CT scan of the heart, a non-contrast CT where you're actually looking for calcifications in the heart arteries. We call it a coronary calcium scan. And that really provides us some good information about what your risk is of having a coronary event. Um, the thing with it is, though, is, uh, is that you oftentimes don't develop calcium in your coronary arteries until you're at least 40 years of age or more. So um, oftentimes, screening before the age of 40 is not all that helpful. Um, we usually take a symptom-driven approach. So we'll ask you questions um, about um, any symptoms that you, you're having that could be related to your heart, and then go from there with our workup. Thank you. Um, so following that, what are some questions that a person should ask their provider about their heart health? Yeah. So. I think the bottom line is you need to ask your provider if you have any of the risk factors that increase your risk for developing um, heart disease. So do I have diabetes? And if not, um, what can I do to prevent that? If I do have it, how can I excellently control my diabetes? And the same is true for high cholesterol and high blood pressure. Um, I think you also need to make sure your, your doctor knows about any symptoms you're having so that they can adequately um, evaluate those. Okay. Um, what are some heart healthy tips that you might have? I know we went over this a little bit with exercise, but are there other things that someone can do to keep their heart healthy? So certainly the exercise recommendations I mentioned, uh, the dietary recommendations, so making sure you eat a well-balanced diet, um, making sure that you avoid things like the trans fats and the saturated fats in your diet, uh, trying to avoid sugar-sweetened beverages, um, high-sugar foods, um, you know, limiting carbohydrates as able. These are all important things, and, and I'm no dietitian, so I know we'll probably get more questions that roll in on this, but you know, I do my best to answer dietary questions. Uh, one thing I will say about diet, um, uh, we as cardiologists like to stick to evidence-based practice, so things that have been studied rigorously and, and been shown to have a benefit, actually. Uh, there are two dietary um, models out there that have shown benefit um, for cardiovascular disease, and that is the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet, the D-A-S-H diet. Um, so these are two diets. You can look them up. Um, I'll talk more about them at the event on the 21st. Um, but those are diets that have been shown to have uh, good, good cardiovascular um, help. Well, we'll just, I'm just going to run through before we follow up a few of kind of some of the fact myths uh, questions and some of these things will probably come up again with that um, conversations with a cardiologist event. But um, number one, during a heart attack, 
does your heart actually stop beating? Not necessarily. So um, I would say that's a myth. Um, the, when the heart stops beating, we actually call that a cardiac arrest. And um, not all heart attacks lead to cardiac arrest. The very serious and severe ones can lead to cardiac arrest. But by far and away, um, when a heart attack happens, the heart continues to beat. It's just sustaining damage because there's a lack of blood flow. Okay. Uh, heart disease actually kills more men than women. And that's a myth. Um, so it, it's actually about even, to be honest with you. So um, I think the 2015 data uh, showed that there was about 300,000 men and 300,000 women that were affected by um, heart disease, uh, the mortality by heart disease. So about 600 million total uh, deaths related to heart disease. Um, jaw or back pain could be a sign of a heart attack. Absolutely, especially if these are things that are happening when you exert yourself. Okay. Um, you get high cholesterol just because of what you eat. And that is a myth. Um, so certainly what you eat contributes to your cholesterol levels. But some of the things we've mentioned uh, previously also contribute, like your genes, your, your family history. Some people eat a perfect diet, but yet they have very high cholesterol levels. Um, about one in ten Americans have some sort of heart disease. And that's actually a myth. Um, it's closer actually to about one in four. Oh, wow. So there's about 92 million people, uh, adults out there living with heart disease um, of the 360 million uh, population in the United States. So about 25 percent. Well, Dr. Jackson, we'll keep you too much longer. We'll, ask, we'll go for two more. Um, low dose aspirin can help you avoid another heart attack. And that is true, uh, that is a fact. Um, so anyone who's had a heart attack, it's a class one recommendation, that's our highest level of recommendation, uh, that you be on an aspirin, it can be a baby aspirin, indefinitely uh, for the rest of your life. Um, and the last one, being obese is the highest risk factor for heart disease. And that's actually not true. Um, so just to dive in a little deeper there, um, obesity increases your risk for things that put you at risk for heart disease, like diabetes, just being sedentary and not exercising, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Being obese increases your risk for all of these things, which then in turn increase your risk for heart disease. If you happen to be one of the obese individuals that doesn't acquire one of these conditions, chances are your risk for heart disease is um, not significantly elevated. All right. Well, again, thank you, Dr. Johnson, for joining us today for this Facebook Live chat. Um, if you have any heart health questions you'd like answered, we strongly recommend attending the Conversations with a Cardiologist session on Wednesday, February 21st. It's at 6 p.m. at Central Care Health Plaza, and Dr. Johnson, he will be there to debunk more myths and deliver facts for keeping your heart healthy. Tickets are on sale now, either online or at the gift galleries at St. Cloud Hospital or Central Care Health Plaza. We'll post a link on Facebook as well. Uh, thank you again for joining us, and we hope everyone out there has a great heart healthy day. Thank you.